Tonight in the shed, guys, we're going to try and fix a washing machine. Well, it's a part of a washing machine. Hey, guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. From some friends of mine have a Simpson 5.5 kg heavy duty washing machine. It's a Encore 555 model, and this is the control panel, obviously. I don't, don't want full washing machines in my shed. I haven't got room for them. I can't lift them at the moment anyway, and I don't want to deal in that big sort of stuff. But I should be able to fix the control panel. Let's have a look and see what's going on. Okay, so this is the brains of the machine, and the symptoms were no power. Apparently, you turn it on, absolutely nothing happens. Nothing lights up. There's no life at all in it. So with a symptom like that, uh, it can make it easier to diagnose the problem. So I have got some photos of what it looks like with all the wiring on. They're on my phone. And we can probably trace where the power goes in. It's clearly going to be a board problem. Um, I think the lid switch, uh, the owner had bypassed the lid switch. So he's got, he, he knows a bit about stuff and he checked all the basics. The fuse apparently is okay. We're going to see if we can diagnose what's wrong with this board. It could be a dodgy part. I don't think it's a capacitor blown. They all look okay, although there might be some on the other board. Uh, it might be a bad solder joint, which is often the problem on more modern circuit boards. So let's pull it out. I'll study the photos. We'll start to diagnose uh, where the power comes in and we'll trace through the circuit and see if we can find a fault. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually remove the board from the housing. I think these plastic clips uh, come out somehow. There, I think there is... Yeah, they're a type of a spring plastic clip. Of course, we don't want to break the plastic. There we go. So it's just a matter of a bit of a push down and a flex out. Oh, that one's a little bit tough. We'll try this end. Yeah, that's better. Now we might be right with the middle one. There we go. So these, oh, these actually lift right away. So that will make it easier. There we go. I don't think we need to make note of where they go. They look identical. So the... There we go. So those three plastic clips hold the whole board into place. Oh, it looks like it's been hot on the board there. So that's the front board with the little tactile switches and your LED display and it's folded so it's it's two boards sandwiched together so we'll need to get it out of this black plastic frame and it looks like it looks like the frame can go you're going to need to make sure we get the board back in exactly the right part of the frame because judging from those little marks it might be able to slide along a bit maybe it suits different models I'm just going to put a fine texture mark just at the edge so I can line it up again. It may not make any difference, but if we mark there to the edge of the plastic frame, oh, let's put a mark the other side too, then it will make sure it goes back in exactly the same position. And that just, just comes straight out. Oh no, we've opened it up there. Oh, the back of the board doesn't look like it's been hot at all. It looks quite good. How does the front board come out? Just the same. There we go. Now we can have a really good look at the board here. It looks pretty good on the back, although some of those solder joints look a little dodgy. I'm going to take this under the magnifying glass in my other little workshop and have a good study, particularly that one. Just check that all the joint... Now, that's on the plug, on the power input plug, so perhaps that is the problem. That one looks... Oh, no, that's a surface mount part. Yeah, we better study the board first, I think. So I've just had a really good look over this board with my magnifying visor, 
and there's definitely something dodgy going on here with this connection. I'll see if I can zoom in from here, but I'll put it under my microscope in a tick and show you, but you can see the one at the end there, it looks to have a bit of a scratched line towards it, and it's looking quite dark, it's really hard in this light, but I think there's been some arcing going on there, which is what that mark might be. But we'll take them under the microscope and have a look. But that's where the main power comes in. So we'll, um, I think we're going to have to resolder those joints and hopefully it fixes the problem. All right, so we're now looking at the screen of my digital microscope. You can see the board underneath here. Hopefully I can hold it steady enough. That's the first contact and it does, that actually looks like it's got a bit of a crack around it as well. Now the board has been coated with some sort of um, some sort of resin or something. You can see all those little bubbles there on the green board uh, because I just tried to test it with my multimeter and it wouldn't make contact. So all these terminals are actually coated with something, presumably to stop any water issues because it is in a washing machine. Uh, those ones don't look too bad. I mean, they look weird because they're bubbly, but I think that's the coating. Uh, and we're getting a bit of strobing here, sorry. And I'm going to have to adjust the focus. Hang on a tick. I don't have enough hands. Okay, so that's one of the other connections. That one looks okay. And that one, whoops, that one looks all right. But have a look at this one. This was the one that looked dodgy. Hang on, I'll get a refocus. And that has definitely been arcing and that won't be making contact. It's pretty well separated the lump of solder on the pin from the uh, copper trace on the board. So we're going to have to resolder that completely. I'll resolder all the other ones. But before I do that, let's just try and hook some power up to it and make sure that we do fix things by resoldering. Okay, now for some tests. So I've got a, a mains plug here with a wire hooked up to some test leads. So we've got our active and our neutral. And then I've got them onto the pins where active and neutral go on the board and I did check the other photos that the owner sent me uh, and that plug does have, I think the active comes to this end, which makes sense because the active should go through the fuse and that just basically goes from the mains to the power switch and then back to this pin here and the neutral goes via some other links but ends up on this pin. So most of these other pins aren't used. The one at the end here is used by a white wire and it might have something to do with a lid switch or something. Shouldn't matter for what we're going to test here. So I'll put the meter on uh, voltage on AC. And you should be able to see the meter there. So I'll plug this in. I'll be very careful what I touch. We should have 240 volts on those two alligator clips and if my theory is correct and that pin is not connecting which it certainly looks like it's not we won't have voltage at the fuse because that's the next that's where the track on the circuit board goes from that pin to the fuse and from this end of the fuse it then goes into the circuit so we should not have voltage across there i could actually probably check it just purely with my ohms meter uh, in fact we'll go to the diode check it should tell us exactly the same thing. So we have connection there and it doesn't go to the fuse. And yet our fuse is fine. So that's exactly what's happening. I don't even really need to do it with the volt, with the full mains power. Um, in fact, I won't. There's no sense doing it now. I will fix that connection. Then we'll hook it up to the mains and we'll see if we get some life in the rest of the circuit. Okay, we'll try and reflow the solder on all these pins, although we don't have to do these two here because they're not used. And I don't know how the solder is going to go through this lacquer or whatever they've put on the board. Yeah, it looks like it's going to solder fine, actually. Uh, it's a bit blobby. Actually, it's not so good. I might try and clean that lacquer off somehow. Just trying some IPA. It looks like it does take the lacquer off, so we'll give it a good soaking with IPA and maybe a bit of a scrub with a toothbrush, and it will help us solder it. And this end one's most important, of course. That's where our poor connection's happening. When I say poor, I mean no connection. All right, let's get a toothbrush onto that. 
certainly taken the stuff off. There we go, that's cleaned it up pretty well. It's, it's certainly messy stuff. I don't know what it actually is. If you do a bit of electronics work, what do you normally use to clean up this sort of sealant stuff over the back of boards? Uh, the IPA did dissolve it, but it took a fair bit of scrubbing. Anyway, I think we should get a better solder on that now, so let's have a go. Then we just need to get a fair bit of heat into it. Certainly doesn't want to stick to the copper trace very well. I think we'll clean that off and do it a bit neater. Alright, it's not sticking to the copper trace at all, really. It's awful stuff to solder. I might have to try a, bit, a little bit of um, soldering fluid on that. Okay, I've just used some old uh, Baker's soldering fluid. And it's I've just soldered a couple of the pins and it seems to be taking much better. Uh, the tracks are still coated with something, I think. But the actual pads are soldering quite nicely. Uh, we don't really need to do this one or this one. Uh, this is the main one, so hopefully we get a good join in here. I'm still not happy with it. It's balling up and it's not flowing down the track like I'd like it to. Okay, I've decided I really don't like soldering onto this board. The solder just doesn't seem to take very well at all. Clearly it's coated with something other than that visible lacquer. And I can't get it to take to the copper tracks at all, even with the soldering fluid. So what I'm going to do... This is the end that's the problem. The others actually look like they soldered all right to the uh, to the copper pads, but they I don't think they were the issue anyway. The issue is in this live wire. So I'm going to I'll use some uh, jumper wire here, and I've tinned it, and I'm actually just going to solder it right across there, and then we'll cover it with a little bit of silicon when we're finished, so that it's safe. In fact, that might sit there quite well to get us a start. And then I'm sure it will hold onto the pin very well indeed, and we won't have any more problems in the future. So that's better. That's a good connection. We'll solder this end here as well, and then we'll just snip it short. Beautiful, that's a good solid connection. I'm happy with that. I can't find my little side cutters. I have to buy some more. There we go. So it might look a little ugly, but it's secure. It will be safe once I smear some silicon over there. And we don't need to worry about the, um, the dodgy copper track on the circuit board. And it is, it's far enough away from that terminal but that one's not used for anything anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. All right, now we can take it back out to the other room and apply some power. But first I'll just uh, swab it down just with a bit of IPA to make sure we get rid of any more soldering flux. We don't want to cause any corrosion. And before I reassemble it, I will just smear a bit of silicon over this just to waterproof it and make sure it's safe. Okay, back to the test bench here. Uh, we're still on the diode check so let's just see if we've made an improvement to that connection we still have our beeper going the fuse is good so we should have a connection here beautiful and across the fuse that's excellent we better make sure we don't have a connection to any of the other pins which we shouldn't have we have a resistance through that one but that's fine that will be going back through part of the circuit uh, probably the primary winding of a transformer okay now that that's fixed let's apply some power and we'll see if we can breathe some life into this circuit board so our active is there our neutral which i did mark on the board by the way just for reference clips are on they're safe they're safe on the end of the lead nothing's touching Let's plug it in and turn it on. Let's hope we don't have an explosion. I do need to get a dim bulb tester hooked up. There we go. We have some flickering life. I think that's probably what they're supposed to do. I'm not sure. 
Uh, but I can't really test any more other than, well, I can't really test any more. We know now that we have power supply to it and we didn't have it before. Uh, I don't know the machine, so I'm not sure if that's normal. I think it does scroll through the options until you push various buttons. Let's have a look at the panel. Uh, it's scrolling through these options here. So I guess you have to press the so I guess you have to press the wash button to select it. So let's try that with a pin. There we go. Yep, it's responding nicely. Uh, the next one's the load size. So I think we can select, yep, extra small, small, medium, large. Uh, I don't think I need to test anymore. I'm sure it's all working fine. Actually, it's interesting that it's not flickering while I'm looking at it here, but looking through the camera, the LEDs are still flickering. It's probably just the something to do with the camera uh, refresh rate or something. I'm sure this is working fine. I think we've fixed it. I will put it back in its housing and we'll give it back to the owner and he can reassemble it in the machine and hopefully the news is all good. It's the next day, guys. We have the uh, control unit back together. The, I let the silicon set overnight on the back of the board where we did the soldering. All went together well. Uh, I lined up all the marks and I have powered it up this morning just to make sure that all the control buttons work and they align with the switches inside. Everything looks good. We're going to call this fixed. I will pin a comment underneath when I hear back from the owners to make sure everything's fine, but I'm pretty confident it's going to be in perfect working condition now. We have saved an old washing machine from being scrapped or dumped at the tip or whatever they would have done with it. Uh, knowing the people, they probably would have tried to recycle it as best they can, but this is the better option. We now have it going, and it will continue to hopefully wash clothes for a lot longer. I think my repair should be fairly secure, so unless something else goes wrong, there's no reason why this machine shouldn't last for quite a few many more years. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next video. Bye for now.